this story isn't new. It took place yesterday. It'll take place today. It'll take place tomorrow and the next day. Over there in San Francisco, down there in New Orleans, over there in New York, up there in Chicago, and right here in our town, Central City. My name is Sullivan, Michael H. Sullivan. They call me Sully. I'm a bartender, and I own this place. What do you have, gents? Another glass of sherry. And see if you can't find a king-sized egg to toss it. It'll be my breakfast. <laughs> Some people really take chances with their insides. There's only one he-man drink in the morning. That's whiskey. Give me another shot. You guys still arguing about what's best to put the fire out the morning after? I still maintain there's only one drink. That's beer. Sully, give me a bottle of my favorite malt. How daffy can a fella get? Now, with sherry... Ah, oh, you're both crazy. Stick to whiskey and nothing bad will ever happen to you. <laughs> what do you say, Sully? Nothing. Except that if you drink too much of any of your favorite drinks, you'll probably get pretty drunk. Yeah? Well, I can drink a dozen bottles of beer any time and still walk a straight line. Don't you know there's practically as much alcohol in a bottle of beer as in a shot of whiskey? Many. Bring the boys some coffee. Coming up, Sully. What kind of talk is that? What are you trying to do, drive business away? Yeah, we'll report you to the brewers and distillers. The brewers and distillers spend millions of dollars trying to get people to drink in moderation. Give me a double shot of rye. I had a tough night. I made 10 campaign speeches. <laughs> Think that's enough, Frank? Might be president someday, or maybe another Betty Grable. Oh, they're just raising the stork. Say, Bob, uh, how much does it cost to have a kid in the hospital? Plenty. Stork rates have gone up since you and I were born. I'm just thinking about my new son. Well, you got plenty of time to think about that. I don't know. He might arrive pretty quick. Yeah? How do you know it's going to be a son? Well, all the babies in my family for generations have been boys. Maybe the stork will change that this trip. I hope not. If he does, I'll lose a bet to every drinking man in town. You and Mary should have a girl. Ah, you're just pretty just because you have a daughter. I love her more every day. We'll probably never have another kid. Someone giving you trouble again? No, but I can never be sure. Calling 152. Call the Eagle Gazette News Guard. Come in, Mason and Leighton. What do you want, Pappy? This is not Pappy. This is Mr. Symes. Yes, Mr. Symes. This is Mason speaking. A subscriber just telephoned me. There's a disgraceful brawl at a place called Sully's Bar down on 6th Street. Now get down there immediately and cover it. We're on our way, Mr. Symes. Brother Symes doesn't seem to like liquor. Does our boss like anything? Ah, oh, fancy meeting you here. Unscrew this cap for me, will you? Hurry, hurry, hurry. If your paper prints that picture, I'll... You lose the election for mayor. Turn me loose. Well, the first thing I'll do when I'm elected will be to fire you. We'll worry about that when you're mayor. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, looks like quite a yarn. What happened, Sully? Emery is one man who should never take a drink. I feel so sorry for him, I think I'll have a double bourbon. Well, you better make it snappy. We've got to get back to the office. Excellent. Very good, very good. It won't help his campaign any. No one poured the liquor down his throat, did they? It's going to play this down, Mr. Symes. Remember, Emery's a big advertiser. Play it up. A newspaper publisher's first duty is to the people. You don't want a drunkard as mayor of this city, do you? Now, let's not waste any more time and idle conversation. That picture of Emery goes on the front page, right where it belongs. And make it three columns, Harry. Hello. I just want to know how my two girls are. Oh, hello, dear. We're fine, just fine. 
<laughs> Ginger's very busy attending to one of her patients. Who is that? It's my sweetheart. He's my sweetheart, too. <laughs> Just a minute, dear. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, nurse. How's the patient? Her pulse, 98. Her temperature, 97.6. Her perspiration, 45. <laughs> In other words, she's practically well, except for the perspiration. Yes, but I must watch her every second. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> yes, dear. Oh. Oh, we'll make it as early as you can, won't you? All right. I love you too, dear. Bye. Now, young lady. Nursing is a perfectly wonderful profession. But don't you know that Florence Nightingale also played the piano? I didn't know they had pianos then. Of course they did. The Light Brigade carried Miss Nightingale's piano with them right into the Crimea. She practiced four hours every day. Am I supposed to believe that? No, but you will practice anyway. Oh, do I have to? Ginger? Okay, I'll practice, Mama. That's my girl. Here we go. One and two and three and. Feed me the funny. Sure. Looky, looky, that's my dad. I told you he'd always have a police escort. Read it to me, Ginger. Police or escorting Frank J. Emery, candidate for mayor, all around the city to meet everybody who must vote for him because he is an awfully good man and the daddy of little Johnny Emery, who is the very best friend of Ginger Mason. Mama, were you the best piano player in the world? Well, not the best in the world, sweetheart. Did you go all over the country? Mm-hmm. Till I married Daddy. Why didn't Daddy go with you? Well, sweetheart, your Daddy's not the kind of man you take places. He does the taking. Right. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Mama. Yes, dear? They need to sleep. All right.
Good morning. What are you doing up so early? It's not early, dear. Must have overslept. Where's Ginger? She got up and dressed, and I gave her her breakfast and sent her to dancing school. Oh. Why didn't you wake me? I tried to, but you were... Oh, no, you don't have to say it. I had too much to drink last night. You couldn't wake me, could you? That's right. I just got to have a drink. Well, why don't you take one? Well, I finished the bottle last night. There's another bottle in the house here somewhere, but I can't think where it is. Have you looked around? I left every place I could think of last night. Look, darling, how about you going on the wagon? You're right. That's what I'm going to do. Only right now I've got to have a drink. Just one drink. It'll fix me up. I'll be all right. I, I know there's a bottle here somewhere. I just have to find it. That's all. If that bottle's in the house, we'll find it. How? By calling an expert finder. Sally talking. This is Bob Mason, Sally. I've got a little problem. Well, that should be very simple. Have you looked in the clothes hamper? Yes. Yeah, she's looked there. How about the dishwasher? No. Try again. Look in the ironing board. That did it, Sully. Thanks a lot. Okay, Bob. Any old time. What'd you call? A friend of mine, bartender. Well, it's a fine thing. You have to call up a bartender to find out where your wife hides her liquor in her own house. How do you know? He says the pattern of all alcoholics is the same. Alcoholic? Well, that's the most insulting thing I ever heard in my life. I'm not any alcoholic. Well, maybe you're not. It looks like you're headed in that direction. I hope you can get off before you get to the end of the line. I'll pick Ginger up at lunchtime. Good morning, Mason. Can I see you for a minute? Sure, come in. No, thanks. It'll only take a minute. I sure cooked my goose yesterday, didn't I? Well, you know how Mr. Syme stands on the liquor question. Sure. He's a carry nation in pants. But I haven't anyone to blame but myself. Seems I can't handle this stuff anymore. I hope there are no hard feelings, Frank. Uh, not at all. Do you know any way we could get Syme to lay off till after the election? I don't know, if but... If you could soften him up a little, I'll see him later today. Well, he won't fire me for trying. I sure appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Okay, Frank. Hey, what are you doing home? <laughs> what is it, Ginger? What's the matter, sweetheart? I'm never going back to that old dancing school again. Why? Why? Come on, honey, tell Daddy. I'll never tell you. Never. Yes, you can. You can tell me, Mother. <laughs> well, Betty Lou and all the kids are saying, they're saying that you're always drunk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Could we have a couple of Cokes? Sure thing, coming right up. Is you guys afraid that's a little bit strong? Boy, when you're driving trucks, you need all your wits about you. Sully, another sherry and egg. And not one of those bantam eggs that palm off on your public. Maybe I'll buy an ostrich farm. <laughs> Turtle eggs might go better in that mess. Well, 
Ah, looks like my lucky day. Just drop in for a small libation, and what do I find? A sucker on every stool. That's what you think. <laughs> Suckers, eh? Well, didn't I bet each and every one of you chumps a drink at my expected air would be a boy? How'd you like to double the bet? Has it happened already? What is this, a fish call? You betting on a sure thing? Far be it from me to take advantage of my pigeons. Nothing has happened yet, but the stork is on the wing. I was just thinking, in case it turns out to be two boys, all bets are doubled. Right? Count me in. Such so, a deal. I'll give the hens a shot of vitamin B, tell them to work overtime. Just a minute, Bill. Has the stork been whispering in your ear? No, but Doc Hale has, and he says it's going to be twins. How do you like that? Uh -oh. Soul down the river. Arm was right. Never give a sucker an even break. <laughs> See you later, pal. Got to make the rounds and double all my bets. <laughs> Hiya, Bob. That's a hype. Minnie. Hmm, what a cute little barmaid. Sally, I'm in trouble. Helen is really on one. She's got the shakes, but good. That's tough. I know, I've had them. I hate to bother you, but... Well, that's what I'm here for. Is your wife any different than the half million other women who are alcoholics? I suppose not. What do I do now? Well, the book says, first things first. What book? Our book, Alcoholics Anonymous. But we won't worry about that now. That'll come later. Now, no drunk wants to read a book. They just want to feel better. I really think Helen wants to quit. Well, then we're on the right track. That's the first requirement. Now, here's what we do. It's all according to the rules, just like uh, making a good martini or writing a good newspaper story. Now, from what you say, she probably needs a doctor to uh, straighten her out so she can get some sleep. Who do you recommend? Well, AA never recommends anyone. All oh, doctors are good. You know all of them. How about Doc Foster? We had him when Ginger had the measles. Sure. Call him up. Now, Mrs. Sullivan will be at your house by the time the doctor gets there. Mrs. Sullivan? Sure. Somebody's got to stay with Helen, haven't they? Oh, that's wonderful of you, Sully. But what about Mrs. Sullivan? How do you know she'd want to stay while my wife is drunk? Well, that's what being a member of AA means. We're just like firemen. When the alarm comes, we slide down the old brass pole. And it's not all unselfish, either. When we help someone else sober up, it helps us to keep sober. Oh, uh, nurse, would you get me a glass of water? Yes, doctor. How is she? Oh, she'll be all right this time. Isn't there a cure for a thing like this? Well, there are several techniques that seem to work with different people, but do any of them fit Helen's condition? Research indicates that many of these problem drinkers suffer from glandular deficiency. Oh, thank you, nurse. Thank you, doctor. Now, your mother's asleep. So when she awakens, you give her these two pills with the water. Yes, doctor. Doc, don't you feel that the AA program helps many of these people? Oh, yes, certainly I know it does. Do you think AA might be the right thing for Helen? Well, it wouldn't hurt for her to try it. AA helps about 50% immediately. Then there's another 25% that makes the grade eventually. I guess about 25% never are helped. Yes, those are about the same figures I've heard. Well, I'm sorry to leave you people, but I must run along. I'll drop in tomorrow. You won't need me tonight. Thanks, Doc. Goodbye. I didn't know Sally was an AA until this morning. That's where I met him, at an AA meeting. You mean you were an alcoholic, too? One of the best. I've been swept up off of every barroom floor in this town. And AA helped you? It put me back on my feet, and then it got me a husband. And now you're completely cured. Well, I wouldn't say that. We AAs live from day to day, some of us from hour to hour. We say to ourselves that in this particular hour, and on this particular day that we won't, with the grace of God, take a drink. It's the only way we alcoholics can control it. We can never cure it. Do you mean that Helen can never be really cured? According to AA, if she's an alcoholic, she can't. Gosh, I don't think many people know that. I wish my paper would let me do a series of feature stories on alcoholism. Fat chance. Sines is one of the worst bigots in town about liquor. Mommy, did Daddy look like that when you married him? 
Yes, yes, only taller. Nine. Well, I see you girls can count correctly. Thank you for the flowers, darling. They're beautiful. So are you, sweetheart. Nine years. Nine wonderful, happy years. Except for... Let's forget that, darling. We're off to a new start. I'm forgetting something. You throw your pencil away, Daddy? What do I want a pencil for? I'm on vacation. One week with pay starting today. Oh, oh goody, goody. Where are we going? Where would you two young ladies like to go? Well, I'm not... <laughs> All right, one at a time. Go ahead, Ginger. Well, we could go to all those fun places at Buckeye Lake and have a picnic and go to the beach and go out into the country and uh, to the movies and ride the roller coaster. <laughs> that's good, that's good. All right, honey, where do you want to go? Well, I'd like to go to Indianapolis and have a little fun, see a few shows, buy a lot of gorgeous clothes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I like Ginger's idea better. <laughs> You know, Ginger, a good cook is hard to find these days. Not as hard to find as a good dishwasher. Oh, no, you don't. I'm on vacation. Uh, see what I mean? Here's a little dishwasher. Not me. I've got to go pack for my vacation. <laughs> I guess I've elected. Oh, I can't believe it. A whole week together, just the three of us. With plenty of time for everything. <laughs> you know something I'd like to do, honey? What? Let's go to one of those AA meetings. Find out what it's all about. Oh, Bob, I'd be terribly embarrassed. Darling, that's not necessary. I, I don't need AA or anything else. It, it's just simply a matter of willpower. Well, I don't want to make a government project out of it, but Sully says it's seeing people that have had the same trouble. You know, being in friendly contact with them is a great help. They have meetings all over almost every night. I thought we weren't going to talk about it. It's very upsetting to me. It isn't fair. I'm all right. Really, I am. I've made up my mind I'm never going to have another drink as long as I live. My dad lived to be 92. He drank a quarter of this every day. And you said he died of old age. Oh, whiskey was much better back in those days. I doubt it. He was probably just a better man. I'd stick to beer. It never hurt anyone. Men, even the Bible says, take a little wine for thy stomach's sake. That's in 1 Timothy, 3rd chapter, 23rd verse. Uh, but also, St. Paul, his epistle to the Philippians said, 4th chapter, 5th verse, let your moderation be known unto all men. That'll hold him. Hello, Bob. Hi, friend. Great, Sully. Everything is wonderful now. We just got back from a swell vacation. How's your wife? Completely well. Forever. That's great. Did you get her to attend any meetings? She doesn't think she needs the meetings. She says they're fine for anyone who's really an alcoholic. You know, like Bill Layton. She's kind of worried about Bill, by the way. Bob, tell her to worry about herself. In AA, we call it to taking our own inventory first. I don't see anything wrong with worrying about another person. It's sort of commendable. This is a selfish program, this AA. We're concerned first with ourselves. 
Any alcoholic has enough problems of his own he can't handle anymore. But if Helen can get well by herself, I don't know why she has to go in for a lot of mumbo-jumbo and attend meetings and embarrass herself. After all, everybody in this town knows her. And me too, for that matter. Are you worrying about Helen or about yourself? Well, you know how my boss feels about liquor. Now you're worrying about your job or not Helen. Frankly, both. Well, how Helen handles the program is up to her. AA offers the tools, and if we don't use them, it's our own fault. Well, I think I'll leave good enough alone. We're very happy now, and I'm very optimistic. Say, what's the matter with you? You don't seem to be so enthusiastic. I've been on this program a long time. I've known a lot of people who felt that way, but sooner or later, they always got drunk. Well, I'd like to make you a bet that Helen will never take another drink. From what you've told me just now, I only hope you're right. something. Mother loves you. Terrible or medium? Terrible. But I'd be just as happy if you'd go someplace else while I fix my hair. Where? Oh, New York, Australia, or, um... Or even over to play with Johnny Embry. I was only going to tell you that the same hank of hair is falling down again. Really? Please so don't call my beautiful hair a hank. Hmm? Anyway, it's the same Hank that's hanging down. <laughs> this morning, dear, but I'm just a little bit on edge. I'll go out and play on my bicycle. That's a wonderful idea. Just till Mother gets dressed. I've been trying to get 1329 for over an hour. Would you please check that line? One moment, please. I will test the line. Just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. There's a conversation on that line. Well, how am I supposed to order my groceries when a man's phone is busy from morning till night? I will give you the supervisor. The supervisor can't order my groceries. unheard of method of looking your name up in the phone book. Sure. I remembered your married name. How are you? Well, I'm all right. What on earth brings you to this part of the world? We've got a nightclub engagement out at the Trocadero. Oh, that's wonderful. I haven't read a thing about it in the paper. It worries me a little, too. 
This local publisher won't take any advertising from any place where they sell liquor, you know. Oh, yes, I know. My husband works for him. How about coming out and hearing the rehearsal? You know, just for old time's sake. Oh, well, that would be fun. I'd like you to meet some of the boys. All right, in about an hour. Yeah, I've got a fine little band now. Good, we'll have a reunion. Bye now. I left you over there, and I find you over here. Service is better here. Tell me more about yourself. Are you happy? Happy? Sure. Reasonably so. You miss the concert stage, the crowds, and the fun of those tours? What do you think? Sure, I miss them. Terribly sometimes. They predicted the conservatory would be one of the world's great concert pianists. Shouldn't have said I was reasonably happy. I'm wonderfully happy. Got a beautiful little girl, a good husband. Sure, I know. Why don't you bring them out to catch my band and show? Husband doesn't drink. Well, you don't have to drink to enjoy good music and have fun. <laughs> makes the music sound better, doesn't it? Well, makes mine sound better. Another drink? Sure. One's too many, a thousand isn't enough. You never used to drink, Helen. I had my music then. Make it a double. Don't you think that's going a little heavy? Sounds like my husband. Well, maybe he's right. Of course he's right, what makes me so mad. Why don't you let me drive you home, Helen? I've got my own car and I'm Perfectly able to drive myself. <laughs> You're doing very well, very well indeed. We're at least beating the Indianapolis papers on all the big news breaking in this area and cutting down their local circulation. That mobile news idea of yours cost me a fortune, but it's paying off. I thought it would. Uh, <coughs> What are you getting now, Mason? The same as always. Well, I'll, uh, I'll raise you $10 beginning next week. Thank you very much, Mr. Time. <laughs> what about Bill Layton? Oh, I want to talk to you about him. His pictures are pretty good, but does Layton drink? What makes you think he does? Well, from time to time, I thought I'd smell liquor on him. Oh, that's probably just the acetic acid he uses in the dark room. Could be, I hope so. I want no drunks on this newspaper. No glory be signed. Oh, you old son saying hypocrite. Oh, you just blew your monkey. There are two schools of thought in AA. One bunch says, let go and let God. Now, that may be all right. But another bunch feels that we've got to get in and make an effort to help ourselves. I string along with that game. I went to the fights the other night with Father O'Leary. Two pugs started to go into the ring, and one stopped and crossed himself. And I said, Father, do you think that does any good? And he said, sure it does, if he can fight. Now, you've got to make a fight yourself. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of us ready to help you. But you've got to show a little of that old moxie. Here, have another cup of coffee. Telephone, Sully. Oh, thanks, Minnie. <clears throat> Sully talking. Oh, that's too bad. I, I'm sorry to hear it, Bob. Well, no wonder you can't reach Doc Foster. 
Sure I know where he is. He's right next door and he's busy. Well, you know the fellow that uh, thought the beer couldn't hurt him. Well, he's stretched out right now in the back of his store. And that's one of the things that's wrong in this town. There isn't a hospital where we can take alcoholics. The cops don't pick up a man for staggering when he's got diabetes or one of the uh, so-called respectable diseases. But if he's got a disease called alcoholism, they throw him right in the can. Well, I was wondering if Mrs. Sullivan could possibly... No. My wife is at jail. In jail? What do you mean? I said at jail, not in jail. She's working down there where the girls are going to be turned loose in the morning. Well, thanks anyway, Sully. I'll just have to take her over to that place on Maple Street. Bye. Would you give me the number of the New Hope Institute on Maple Street, please? We can guarantee nothing. This treatment may keep her from drinking forever, or she may walk right out of here across the street to a bar. We just do the best we can. Where's your wife now? In the car in the driveway. Would you go get the patient, please? Hello there. I'm Walt Williams. I'm glad someone in this town has. Is your mother in? No, she isn't. Do you mind if I wait for her? Is it terribly important? Oh, yes, it's important to me. You any idea when she'll be back? Not exactly. How are your parents? My mama's not very good. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it uh, anything serious? We don't know yet. Shall I give her a message? No, I guess not. Perhaps my idea won't work. What was your idea, Mr. Williams? Well, I was thinking of getting her to play at the club this weekend. You know, your mother's a very fine pianist. You inherit any of her talent? Huh? No, sir. I'm terrible. I guess I don't practice enough. Besides, I like to sing and dance better. <laughs> Look, this is a new one. Hmm, I never heard this before. Come on. How about singing this for me? I'm not very good at the piano either. I'm glad your mother can't hear me. I don't feel very much like singing. No? Funny thing about that, I sometimes don't feel like playing either, especially when I'm worried about something. And then sometimes, music good for what else you. Come on, let's go.
Very nice. You know something? I don't think an artist should perform for nothing. I don't think a singer should sing for nothing. And I don't think a painter should paint for nothing. Mr. Tucker charged $40 just to paint the kitchen. Well, then Mr. Tucker is a very smart painter. Do you mind if I feed the kitty? It's a piggy. I'm saving for a bluebird uniform. Well, anyway, here goes. You know, I'm kind of hungry. I could fix you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, I have a better idea than that. I like a hamburger with all the trimmings. You happen to know of a place near here where... Uh... There's a drugstore right down at the corner. Tell me, how are they on hamburgers and double malted milks and maybe a piece of apple pie? They're very good, but awful expensive. Right at this time. Will you join me? Oh, thanks, Mr. Williams. I'll only be a minute. I must leave a note for my dad. Sure, I wouldn't want him to think that I kidnapped you. Now, here are the unofficial early tabulations in today's voting. Uh, precinct 1, Mayor John B. Stewart, 436, Frank J. Emery, 13. Uh, precinct 2, Mayor Stewart, 589, Emery, 27. Precinct 3, Mayor Stewart, 365, Emery, 6. The early incomplete and unofficial returns indicate a record landslide Maybe may come tonight, Bill, or maybe two or three days. But we better keep Mary here. Two or three days? I can't afford to stay tight that long. With this increase in family, you may have to give up drinking. I don't know how his system stands it. Come in here a minute. Oh, you mean you got a drink handy, Doc? For medicinal purposes only. Just my luck. I thought you newspaper men might like to see some charts we have that show the physiological effects of alcohol on us humans. Cigarette? Thanks. One of our leading universities has devoted a great deal of time to alcoholic research. According to the scientists, not everyone who drinks to excess can be correctly termed an alcoholic. Ah, now you're talking sense, Doc. You know, alcoholism has been a health and social problem ever since the world began. I didn't know that. But, Doc, why is it that Bell here can drink like a fish, with no apparent bad effects, when just a few shots put Helen out? Drinking affects people differently. To understand alcoholism, you must first accept the fact that it's a disease. Never been sick a day in my life. Government figures show that some 65 million people drink in this nation today. And out of those, there's 4 million that are alcoholics. It's a small percentage, but it's an awful lot of people. Women make the worst drunks, don't they, Doc? They sure do. I can't agree. Facts prove otherwise. You see that in the teenager group, girls drink just as much as boys nowadays. However, in the old age groups, you see that at 50, approximately two men drink to one woman. This is interesting. Oh, yes. Now, you see that a bottle of beer has a little less alcohol than a glass of wine. A glass of wine has a little less than a glass of whiskey. However, there's very little difference in the amount of alcohol contained in each. I don't believe that. The difference in the effect of the beverage on the individual is due mostly to the fact that the alcohol is diluted more in the beer and wine than it is in the whiskey. Which is the easiest to digest, Doc? The stomach won't digest alcohol. It's absorbed directly into the bloodstream almost immediately. Then why doesn't it poison you? Because in a sense, it's a food. It's also a sedative. It has certain comfort-giving qualities. But it's definitely not a stimulant. It's a depressant. Well, it has, it acts something like an anesthetic. Keeps me awake instead of putting me to sleep. Hundreds of years ago, alcohol was discovered to be a useful medicine. Other drugs have been discovered since, which today are preferred by most physicians. Yes, I know. I've read that recently. Ah, a couple of drinks don't hurt anybody. Yes, you're right, if they can stop there. Moderate drinking never shorten or lengthen anyone's life. But excessive drinkers have a very high death rate. Ask your insurance man. I sure wish I knew what would cure Helen. Unfortunately for both you and her, Bob, Helen is an alcoholic. She's a person who has a mental obsession to drink. And yet, she's physically allergic to alcohol. We call her kind compulsive drinkers. They're frequently underweight because they try to substitute alcohol for wholesome food. And when this happens, the drinker's body doesn't get the essential minerals and vitamins. They think that alcohol overcomes fatigue, but it doesn't. 
Maybe not, but it sure peps a fellow up. That could be your imagination. Note how alcohol affects the human brain. The drinker may lose his muscular coordination, consequently have dilated pupils, an unsteady gait, flushed face, or begin to stutter and stammer, or become tongue-tied. It's certainly a subject that none of us knows enough about. Oh, I guess no one knows all about it. It's a very great problem. I haven't given it too much study, but it would take me a week to tell you all I've learned. What got us in here, anyway? I'm beginning to lose my thirst for bourbon. That day should ever come. The problem that is facing our nation today is the best and quickest way to curb alcoholism. The alcoholic is indeed a sick person. Satisfactory hospital facilities must be provided before real progress can be made. When I graduated from medical school, we hardly dared mention cancer, tuberculosis, and public gatherings. Today, almost everyone contributes to the yearly drives. Yes, and they're making tremendous strides, aren't they? Now the world needs to know all the facts about alcoholism. Too many good people are living in ignorance. You know, ignorance is a sin. Knowledge is power. Mrs. Mason, right now you're in excellent physical condition. However, if you should have any trouble in the future, please come back and see us. I will, Doctor. Thank you. You're welcome. How do you feel, dear? Terrible. The doctor said you should try to eat as much as possible. I couldn't eat a thing. Let's drive around for a little while before we go home, can't we? Sure, why not? Anything that'll make you feel better. Any news about Leighton's baby? No, well, they're expecting any day now. He's still drinking as much as usual? I don't think so. By the way, where is he? I left him at the office. I'll pick him up after a while. Um, how's Ginger? She's been perfectly wonderful. Oh, so you two can run the house just as well without me. Now, don't be silly. We've missed you every minute. How's your friend, Sully? He's fine. Does he still think I'm an alcoholic? I suppose everyone in town knows I've been in an alcoholic sanitarium. Not at all. And what does that old hypocrite Fine think? What did you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. I wish you'd stop and get me some cigarettes. There you are. Your own brand. Thanks. Would you mind stopping at a gas station? Okay.
Don't you want me to send out an all-point broadcast? You know, something might happen to her. Better wait a few hours. Give me a chance to find her. I don't want Ginger to know about it if I can help it. Well, suit yourself, Bob. On or off duty, you know where to find me. I'm always willing to help. Well, thanks for the lift home. You bet. Throw me the keys. Don't bother to hand them to me. I don't want to be that close to a miserable drunk. Just throw them. Well, where are the keys? You're wearing them. Like a toupee. You can both pick up your checks at the offices of yesterday. Now listen, Mr. Symes, you're a reasonable man. I'm not a reasonable man. That is, as far as liquor is concerned. Who said anything about liquor? Where have you been all day? How did we happen to get scooped by the Herald on the biggest local story of the year? Well, it wasn't Layton's fault. I'll admit I was off on personal business, and I... I'll bet it involved liquor. I'm afraid it did. But why fire him just because I fell down on the job? I'll tell you why. Reporters and photographers are a dime a dozen. But the suicide of a prominent citizen doesn't happen every day. Uh, no, it only happens once. And now that he's dead, all of a sudden, Emery becomes a distinguished citizen. You're flooding the thing. How long do I have to sit here and be insulted by you? I don't know. How long do you think it'll take you to get the car started? Layton's only kidding, Mr. Sines. Well, this is no time to be kidding, as you say. If that were my car, I'd sue you. For once, Simes is right. This is no time to be kidding. I'm sorry, Phil. Eh, what's a job when a guy like that needs telling off? Well, here comes our bus. Hello, darling. How's Mama? She's much better. But she won't be ready to come home yet. Maybe for a day or two. Why are you crossing your fingers? Remember what you said the other day about us being partners? Mama's not all right, is she? Okay, partner. All I know is that Mama got out of the car while I was bringing her home. Bill Layton and I are going to drive around now and find her. In the station wagon? I won't be using the station wagon, dear. I'm not with the paper anymore. Oh, Daddy, what are we going to do? Now, don't you worry, honey. We're going to get along fine if we can just find Mama.
I'm all right. What could be the matter with me? Where's your father? He's out looking for you. Well, isn't it work? Daddy sort of quit his job. We've been terribly worried about you. I don't see why you all persist in worrying about me. I'm perfectly all right. I, I can take care of myself. And Mama. I don't see why I should be required to explain my actions to a child. I had such a dreadful time in that miserable hospital your father sent me to. Oh, he thought it would make you a lot better, Mama. So you're both against me. I'm not against you, Mama. Ginger. I've got a surprise for you. A surprise? We'll we'll take a long drive out in the country together. Uh, maybe we'll stop in and see Walt Williams. He's a bad leader I used to know. I think I've told you about him. I met him, Mother. Oh, really? So you and your father have been out having a good time while I... I thought you said you were looking for me. We were. Get your coat and hat. Shouldn't we wait till Daddy gets here? We won't be gone long. Do as I say. Go on. You coming, Ginger? Coming, Mama. Well, hurry up. What do you want, dearie? Two dollars and forty-two cents a bottle. Ain't too bad. Don't take long to drink up a piggy bank, does it, dearie? Mm, no, no. Can't drink on the premises. Now, I'll have to get broom to clean up the mess. You're all right. Yes, sir. He's been awful good. 
good to me these last few minutes. Oh, I'll say you have, little girl. My mama's sick. Yes, I can smell it. That's the medicine she takes. <laughs> now, now, don't you worry, honey. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Waiting around to see you, Bob. I I brought Ginger home. Well, she's all right. They found her with her mother out at the edge of town. Is Helen here? No, she's not. They picked her up on a 302 charge. That's drunk in auto. Well, I guess I better get on there. You won't do you any good, Bob. She's in the psycho ward at General. Psycho ward? Yeah, they won't let you see her for at least 24 hours. What this town needs is to open the doors of its hospitals and take care of alcoholics, as well as other sick people. Why doesn't the Eagle Gazette do something about it? Mr. Layton. Mr. Layton. Mr. Layton. Boy, is it a boy? Boy, no, oh boy, Layton. oh boy. You're not a father yet. You just wanted on the telephone. Oh, telephone. Must answer the phone. Oh. Please, Mr. Layton, the telephone is down here. Oh. I have Mr. Layton for you. Hello? Oh, hello, Bob. Yeah? I've decided to write those articles. Meet me at Simes' office in the morning at 9 o'clock. I'll be there. Goodbye. How is Johnny, Doctor? Well, he's a sad little sack. Can I do anything? Yes, you can go upstairs and sit with him. Try and cheer him up a little. Yes, Doctor. Is he very sick? Oh, it's nothing catching. I diagnose it mostly as lonesome fever. I know. I got it, too. But, Mr. Sime. No! But why? We'll both take a cut in salary. I wouldn't have either of you at no salary. Then you won't go for the idea. You've never done a more accurate piece of reporting in your life. Here, yeah, you can't photograph me in my own office. I don't know why not. You're a public figure, aren't you? What do you want my picture for? 
We're going to bury it under the cornerstone of the new alcoholic wing at the hospital. And I'm going to caption it? Won't you please reconsider? The man who said? No! Reverend, in addition to the scientific facts, you realize that excessive use of alcohol is no respecter of creed any more than any other disease. And no greater stigma should be attached to this particular sickness. An alcoholic wing in our city hospital must be for all denominations, open to anyone who wants to get well, without discrimination of race, creed, or color. Father, I cannot emphasize too much the importance of this campaign. We know, and science believes, that the only chance for the probable recovery of an alcoholic is the belief in a higher power. We must first, however, restore the sick alcoholic to some degree of health. And this can only be done if we can convince Mr. Symes to run the articles in his paper. Convincing the public to contribute to the building of a wing at our city hospital to take care of our alcoholics. Rabbi Kaufman, this series of articles that I propose to write is not alone the most important thing in my life. It is equally important to the entire community. We know that the people of your particular faith are rarely alcoholics. And yet they've been generous contributors to programs for helping those poor unfortunates. This town urgently needs more hospital facilities. Can I count on your assistance? There's some people out here to see you, Mr. Symes. Well, show them in, show them in. Come in, folks. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Adams, how do you do? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Symes. Mrs. Johnson. Nice to see you. Uh, Rabbi, Father. How do you do? <laughs> Dr. Foster. Well, uh, this is quite a distinguished <laughs> gathering. Uh, so sit down, sit down, gentlemen, sit down. And what might bring you good people here at this hour of the morning? A civic matter, Mr. Symes. A project which merits our mutual support. An important need in the future of Central City. A cause which requires the help of everyone, without thought of race, creed, age, or color. Yes, Mr. Symes. We need the support of this newspaper and your strong personal influence. Central City must have increased hospital facilities, must have provisions for properly caring for that group of sorely neglected sick people, the alcoholics. Do I understand you correctly? 
Certainly you intelligent people don't expect this newspaper to support a project to take care of a bunch of drunks. <laughs> Are you losing your minds? Could be, but I hardly think so. We've all been giving this matter considerable thought. Your man Bob Mason has brought it forcibly to our attention. He's not my man. Why, Mason's wife is one of the worst. One of the worst? Yes. But at the same time, just one of the many, many unfortunate women who've gotten themselves off on the wrong road. My job, your job, our job is to help alcoholics rehabilitate themselves. That's your problem, not mine. This paper never told anybody to get drunk. Now, I'm very happy to have you all drop in. But I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Possibly not. Mason has sold you good people with the idea of sobering up drunks. <laughs> it won't work. I don't think you fully understand, Mr. Times. People mentally and physically ill from the excessive use of alcohol are a problem almost as old as history itself. Until recently, we looked upon as social parasites, subnormal mentally, and as nuisances in every community. Well, aren't they? Mentally unstable, perhaps. Some of them are emotionally ill, but regardless of why they drink. It's been proven that threatening them, beating them, throwing them in jail is as ineffective, ridiculous, and wrong as it might be to lock up a person who might have cancer, tuberculosis. I've read a lot about this new train of thought, Doctor. But I'm still convinced if we do away with whiskey, we'd have no need for more hospital rooms. You have a good argument, Mr. Simons, but the facts prove it wrong. As long as there is plant life on this earth, there will be alcohol. We must face this as a fact and stop dodging the issue. Some people simply cannot drink. But they do and they will. At least until we give them the necessary help to get back on their feet and realize fully their problem. Campaigns are needed to uncover the truth, disseminate the facts. There is a national organization for this purpose, like the TB and cancer societies. Hmm. Uh, Mrs. Adams, what does your temperance organization think about this? Well, I'll admit we're very one-sided. We don't think anyone should drink. Drinking is absolutely non-essential. I've seen the results of it. Broken homes, divorces, fights, neglected children. I agree with every word you say. But I am firmly convinced that it's a public duty to provide adequate hospital facilities for these sick people. <coughs> the care of alcoholics should definitely be transferred from our police department to the public health agencies. I, uh, I don't believe I know you. This is Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Symes. I suppose you know him. Sully runs a well-kept bar, and he's a real community worker. I've known Sully a long time. He's from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, no, I, I'm not from AA. Uh, one couldn't correctly uh, say that. Uh, you see, nobody's from AA, and nobody can speak for our fellowship. Uh, we carry AA around with us, in our hearts, that is. Why don't you AAs build yourselves a private hospital? Oh, you really don't understand, Mr. Symes. AA has no money. It's purely a fellowship and not an organization. Whatever it has, it, it gives away every hour of every day. <laughs> not even a millionaire has enough money to buy it. What does your group think about more taxation? Well, Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on any controversial subject. Uh, nor does it oppose anyone or anything. AA has but one purpose, to help the sick alcoholic recover, if he wishes. I can't understand a bartender making such statements. <laughs> You'd better not let the distillers hear you sounding off like that. Now, let me tell you something, Mr. Symes. The liquor industry would gladly spend millions of dollars if they could only teach people to drink in moderation. It's the excessive drinker who gives the liquor industry a black eye. And who are you? I don't believe I know you either. My name's Boyer. I own the Trocadero. I'm the guy you won't let advertise in your newspaper. <coughs> well, uh, that's my policy. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Johnson, you've been very quiet. Uh, what does your PTA think about all this? Alcoholism is becoming a bigger problem every day. We're alarmed at the increased drinking among the young people. We simply must get to work and tackle this thing in the right way. <clears throat> and uh, the gentleman in the corner, do I know you? You probably don't. 
I'm Henry B. Harrison. I was this town's most notorious drunk for 15 years. <laughs> and naturally, you wouldn't mind if the taxpayers were further burdened to build a new hospital wing. No, I wouldn't mind in the least. I and my company will be glad to pay our share. Uh, who did you say you were, sir? It's not important who I am. This alcoholic problem must be whipped if this nation is to remain strong. Millions of man hours are lost every year in our factories because the problem of alcoholism is pushed aside. I say let's quit talking and do something. I'll admit I didn't realize how important this subject is. But it seems to me that medical science is the answer. Dr. Foster, your profession must have some cure for these drinkers. Many helpful discoveries have been made. Another new form of treatment was reported just a few days ago. Then that's the answer. Only steps in the right direction. It must be recognized that the alcoholic is a very sick person. The Lord will help those who help themselves. That's true. Sully, there's an example. These sick people do recover and return to society as useful men and women. You must realize, Mr. Symes, it is not the desire of anyone in this group to excuse simple drunkenness. Alcoholism is a great public problem, challenging all of us. It seems to me the problem simply calls for the application of the golden rule. The golden rule? Yes, Mr. Symes, the golden rule. Ever hear of that? What do you have, boys? Give me a straight shot, Sully. Sure, Nick. How about a little contribution? Not bad. Yeah. You're right on the ball, Sully. But I feel so terribly ashamed. Ah, oh, don't worry. No, I'm not thinking about myself. It's what might have happened to what I'm told, Ginger saved your life. But maybe it wasn't Ginger either. I'm afraid I don't understand. Then don't try. It'll come to you when you're ready. Nobody ever sent for an angel. Angels just show up when you need them most. I suppose so. People can't turn on the spiritual blessings that come from understanding him just whenever they please. It's not like turning on and off a water faucet. Now, listen. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow isn't here yet. Just live for today. Oh, Are you ready to go home now? See me? Yes, I'm Bob Mason. Oh, I'm awfully glad to know you. Helen told me what a fine husband she has. Well, I sometimes wonder about that. I stopped by your house the other day, didn't you tell you? Yes, she did. What a trick you lucky people have in that youngster. We think so. Walter, I hope you've read today's paper. It'll perhaps make my job a little easier. Sure, read all about it. What can I do to help? First, I want a little check from you. It'll prove to my boss that you nightclub people are human. Well, you can count me in for 50. Just in behalf of my drummer who's beating himself to death with a bottle. Thanks very much. And then I wondered if you and Mr. Boyer wouldn't set up some sort of benefit show for the project. Benefit show? Well, it sounds like a good idea. Let's talk to Boyer about it. Eddie? Mr. Boyer around? Don't you think it's time we both went to sleep now, dear? Are you awfully tired, Mama? Good night's sleep's what I need. I wish Daddy would come home. So do I, dear. He said he'd be awfully late. Would you like to hear me say my prayer? Yes, Ginger. Especially tonight. Dear God, 
I cannot see your face, but I know that you are there. At home, or at school, or anywhere. Dear God, I know night or day I have no need to fear. For though I cannot touch your hand, your love is always near. Dear God, make peace throughout the world. And bless my daddy and my wonderful mama. And make us strong that we may serve you always. Amen. I'll just have time for a double bourbon. Hmm. Hey, Sully, what does that mini dame do here? She opens the joint, she closes the joint, and, and she tunes in the, the television. television. I pay her off in coffee and beans. Yeah, she gets in my hair. Mine, too, if I had any. But what can I do? You can fire her, can't you? Not till the building falls down. Minnie goes with the lease. Come on, come on, I gotta get back. Say, have you given up your home? Yep, I sleep in the lobby of the hospital. That must be something. Do you snore? Sure. When I snore, it disinfects the place. Alcohol is a disinfectant, isn't it? It's killed off a lot of things. Why don't you drop in tonight and see us? My sons will be born any time now, maybe any minute. I wouldn't go to see the Statue of Liberty have a baby tonight. Why? What's up? Helen Mason just phoned my wife. She's asked us to take her to our AA meeting tonight. Here are the tickets for the benefit show, Mr. Symes. Mr. Boyer just phoned, said to tell you he'd reserved a front table for your party. Good, good. Uh, how are the contributions coming in? The auditing department can't begin to keep up with them. <laughs> well, I never tackle anything that I don't put over, Harry. Yes, Mr. Symes. I'm sorry, Bill, but Dr. Hill never allows fathers in surgery. I'm paying the bill. I know. Now, be a good father and just stay here by the window. You'll see everything there is to see. I imagine the experience may have quite a sobering effect on you.
If you had sounded that good out in Hollywood, you'd still be there. Well, look who's here. If it isn't Hollywood's gift to women, Ern Westmore. How are you? Fine. How have you been? Hi, fellas. What in the world brings you out this way? Just driving through to New York. I leave next Wednesday for London. But you got to stay over tonight. We're going to have a big benefit show. Sorry, Walt. I got to keep pushing on. Just happened to notice your name out in front. Thought I'd better stop in and say hello. Come on over and have a drink. Fine. I've just had one of my few good ideas. Look, I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> Bouncing baby girls, what a name! <laughs> there he is! Oh, oh, that's the guy that said Barnum was right, cold as all suckers! Oh, oh, oh. Sully, I'm paying off all my bets. A triple bourbon here on Layton. What a character. Three girls, three beers. Oh, oh, old triple header Layton. Oh, what a sucker. Make mine three glasses of sherry. And what will a little miracle man have? With three daughters to support, I'll be in hock the rest of my life. Give me a Coke on the house. Something to drink, sir? Yes. Uh, two tomato juice cocktails. And pep them up with a little lemon juice, please. All right, sir. And next, ladies and gentlemen, the most unique act of our benefit show. The famous dancing instructor, Mr. Louis Dupron, and one of the star pupils, Miss Ginger Mason. and we have the jewelry to match. So it's a frame. Seems that. You know, I feel very honored, Mr. Westmore. You do? Mm -hmm. I've read about you for a long time. Well, we'll have some real fun now. fine band leaders for me and offered for our show his famous vocal sextet, the harmonist.
You have great natural beauty, Mrs. Mason. Thank you, Mr. Westmore. I think most of the credit should go to you. Forget it. There isn't a woman in the world that can't be made to look more beautiful. Unless it's because you love me. Let's walk on board. Oh, the children, well, there's room for many more. This train, no cattle joker, this train. And 
this train don't care no joker, this train. And this train don't care no joker, no stuff even no cigarette smoker, this train, that clean train, this train. And this train don't care no liars, this train. And this train don't care no liars, this train. This train don't care no liars, no hypocrites and no backsliders. This train and Bob's glory, this train. Then jump on board, oh, little children. Better get on board. Oh, little children. Now hurry on board. Oh, little children. Well, there's a room for many of more. Oh, grab your ticket. Oh, little children. Oh, chain and leave. Oh, little children. Oh, little children. Well, there's a room for many of more. Well, let a little, 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 let Now, friends, the treat of treats. Although many of you might not have known it, there's been living here in your midst for several years one of the world's truly fine young concert pianists. With great deal of pleasure, I like to introduce Helen Leroy Linton. But of course, you all know her as Mrs. Robert Mason. been good to us, Daddy?
Well, folks, that's the story. <laughs>